Hello world and welcome back to another video about Photolab. And today's video is actually something from a comment that I got just recently. And that comment was about camera profiles, essentially. Is why when I open it up, does it not look like it does when it's in the camera? And I know that this is a really common topic for people who are doing raw processing, is we get this one view of the image as the camera sets it, and then when we open it in another program, that changes, that shifts, unless, of course, we're opening it in the company's proprietary software. So, for example, if I were to use NX Studio, it would open, it would know the camera profile that I used, and it would deliver me a matching result. And these camera profiles I'm talking about, it's like, for example, in Nikon Universe, we've got standard, vivid, landscape, neutral, portrait, and even a flat profile. And it changes the overall look. And you can see that a little bit here. I've got this piece of software open called Photo Supreme, which I've brought up for a very specific reason, in that it is showing the NEF and the JPEG as matching. I've got some, this one is vivid, this one is standard, this one is portrait, and then I've, I've just done the same with a color checker down below. But each of those is matching. And so why do they match sometimes, and why do they not match other times? And I'm guessing possibly many of you will know this already, but if you're dealing with raw images, they're a little different than a JPEG. And I was thinking of what kind of an analogy I could use, and here, here's my analogy brought to us by a generative AI <laughs> made this image for me, good on it. And, uh, and I thought, you know, the JPEG is kind of equivalent to a cake in that it's been baked. It's been, you know, the shape has been decided, it's been put there, the flavors are all kind of in there, um, the icing gets put on and decorated, and if you want to change this, you can change it a bit, you know, you could cut the icing off and you could try to manipulate it in this way or that, but it probably will never be quite the same as if you just made it that other way in the first place. Whereas the batter is more representative of a raw file in my mind, and that is that it is, essentially the raw file is is the the data from the sensor that you have access to, and you can kind of change that recipe quite easily and quite effectively as you go. So I could add more flavor to this recipe, I could add some color to this recipe, um, I could change the shape of the final cake with this recipe, you know, so I can do all that, and in the end, it's going to look great, because that's, you know, that's how it's been through the whole process. But I was just in that other application, and they both looked the same, and what's up with that? Well, it just a, and again, I know probably many of you know this, but the raw file actually has an embedded JPEG in it. So that same JPEG that it produced, it's tucked one into the file so that when software looks at the file, it can show you something quite quickly. And that's a JPEG preview. And that JPEG preview has the same recipe as any JPEG you would have made. So here lies the problem. You look at these thumbnails and suddenly they are not the same. We've got the JPEG, which has got the baked-in corrections or baked-in settings, and you've got the RAW, and this one, DxO is looking at it and applying its own recipe, its own set of um, what should happen. Now these are all currently all of the NEFs. If I come up here to Preferences... I've got these set to no correction currently. Truly speaking, normally for my own setup, I usually have optical corrections only because I pretty much always want those. Um, but right now I have that turned off. And over here, I've got always prefer high quality previews unticked. That was an experiment. I was curious whether or not that would leave it to show me the embedded JPEGs. Did not. So I'll just go ahead and tick that again because it doesn't seem to make a difference on my system. So clicking on that. So that's vivid and, and then what we get. And basically this now is, well, this pair was taken on camera standard. So that's how it baked into the JPEG. And this is what DxO is giving me. And these two, you, you'll see, are just processed identically because there's been nothing different about them. So if I thought about, I think standard is probably, you know, the closest we would come to um, with, with DxO's basic recipe. So if I come here and I come across 
uh, to the color space and I turn on the generic renderings for camera profile Z50, how close does it come? Well, looking at the thumbnails, I think that the, the contrast is probably about right now. But I notice the skin tones are a bit different. So the skin tones on the Nikon recipe are a bit redder. The skin tones on the DxO recipe are a bit sort of oranger. So a little, little bit of a shift there, but the contrast has come pretty much similar. Now I do notice that if I have generic renderings and I do neutral color, then that's actually what we got in the first instance. That's what it will default to unless you've told it something else. And I can see that the, the color is a lot closer. The, the redness is, is in the skin a bit more, but then the contrast is just a, a little bit different, which you can correct, you know, over here. We could literally give it some, some contrast there and just try to, try to match those two things. Not too far off. I, again, I, this has got no corrections. It's a bit distracting, but um, that's why the, the optical corrections, the distortion correction, that's why the, the view is changing a little bit each time. So what's involved in the picture profiles? And I think I should just correct myself as well. I think a couple of times previously I might have said something, I might have used language more like camera profiles, uh, but I think that that's probably misleading. I think we, I should pr try to stick to the language of picture profiles because that's possibly a little bit different than a camera profile might be. So if I think about the picture profiles, I brought up uh, the Nikon, you know, I just live in the Nikon world here. So I brought up, they've got picture control utility where you can, where you can make some little tweaks to things and you can uh, upload those or you can create your own, that sort of thing. And some of the adjustments are, as well as I can tell, hidden to us. So I think there's a lot, you know, some tone curve work, for example, that we can't see. But if I just click through here, so that's standard, and then neutral loses some contrast. So that's probably the main difference there. It's just a, a downing of contrast. Vivid increasing of contrast, possibly a little bit of extra saturation. We've got flat here as well. Now on my camera, I've also got portrait and landscape. Not really sure why they're not showing up in this application. I don't. I don't use this application particularly, but I think most of the most of the heavy lifting for these is probably under the hood in terms of a particular tone curve for each one. And uh, just as by example, if I come to here, there's a, a wee website for Nikon where you can grab some picture controls that other people have used, and you can kind of get a sense for what what people are adjusting here. So if we take, this is the, just the first one that came up, but it's an AGFA um, simulation. And you can see that, that there's a little bit of a, so kind of a, an evening out of the, the darker tones and into the shadows, it rises up a bit through the mid tones, it stays a bit higher um, and, then, and then works its way back down towards the, the highlights. So they just kind of mapped out this particular tone curve that, that feels to match. And they've added a little bit of sharpening, but other things that they might hit on, contrast, brightness, saturation, and hue. All of the basics, really. So it's just trying to find the balance that matches that. That is a picture control. So when we come back here and we say that this one is standard and this one is portrait, it's just changing these different parameters, maybe slightly different curve, slightly different contrast. The colors could could potentially have a little bit of a hue shift. I, I personally think that the one for portrait has a little bit of a hue shift, whereas the one for standard doesn't seem to so much. So it's just how do we go about impacting those things? So I mentioned early on that I've got two ways to approach this, and one is a little bit trickier. It's a little bit more manual, a little bit more hands-on, uh, and the second one is a little bit easier. So for the, for the hands-on one, if we take, I'll just work with the, with the standard one, because I think that's probably closest to what DxO gives you out of the box, is, is close to a standard look. So if I take this one and I look here, what do I need to do? Well, first of all, I would not come over here and put on the camera profile. Truth told, 
I would, because I prefer these skin tones in this situation over those skin tones. So, you know, that's a decision that I would make. But if I were trying to match, if I were trying to match, I would hold tight. There we go. Neutral color, I would leave it there because that seems to be hitting on those red tones a little bit better. And I would come to my tone curve and I would choose, you could, you know, here I've already upped my contrast a bit. Um, you know, you could tweak it with contrast. You could move your selective tone sliders and get the look you're after. The reason that I would suggest trying to do it on the tone curve, if you're able, and I know tone curves are a little bit tricky, is that then you've then got, once you apply the tone curve, you've got all of your other sliders to give it other little adjustments. So I don't know, just, just a thought. I don't know that it makes a huge difference, but if I wanted to add contrast here, I'm probably going to bring that down a little bit, and I'm probably going to come up here to my mid-tones, try to get a point on there, lift that up a little bit, and we'll just take a look. Yep, so I've gone, I've gone a little bit too bright in the brighter spaces, so I might try to drag that down a little. I think I've gone just a little bit too bright in general. So probably what I want to do is that. Yeah, that's getting pretty close, isn't it? And standard does look like it's got a little touch more um, saturation in it. So I'll go ahead and impact that before I play with my tone curve too much. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do vibrancy, in fact. Yep, I think still a little bit more contrast. So i grab this. I don't want to go too high with that. Um, and just grab this, bring it down a little bit. There we go. I think that that's, you know, for a, for a quick go, that's a reasonably close hand-drawn facsimile. And I think, I think there could be, you know, as I look a little bit more fine-tuned, there could be a little bit of a hue shift in there. So, you know, you could try um, just bringing that just a hair up towards, up towards the oranges. Pretty close. So you get the idea. So that's, that's technique number one. Just by way of a super quick interjection from future me, as I was watching back the video, as I was editing the video, it struck me what needed to happen for this one in order to, and then this is my NEF, and this is my JPEG, and you can see that those are awfully, awfully close now. And uh, so what I did, which is a little bit of a different approach, I hadn't thought of this straight away, was to impact my gamma here. So normally this sits on one by default, and I've brought that down to 0.8, um, which in and of itself, without these two little points added, is a little bit too dark um, and a little bit too bright. So in fact, what I did was ended up, I put the gamma down here, and then I ended up lifting the shadow area is just a smidge, and I ended up bringing down the highlights just a smidge. So I got this area even, and I got this area even, both of which were not quite right when I just did the gamma curve on its own. I also, in amongst all that, it still wasn't quite, didn't have quite as much red in it, so I've put a point and I have lifted that a hair. I have barely lifted that. I wish, in fact, in some applications you can get a bit of a readout of exactly where it is and you can fine tune it. I wish that that was a feature in DxO, hint hint DxO if you ever happen to watch this. Um, but that aside, little tiny lift there. And then one other thing, which is I just brought the saturation down a little bit as well. So that's it. Pretty simple adjustments in the end and almost exactly spot on. So and the trick to that again was including this gamma here, so be worth playing around if you're giving this one a try. And of course, don't forget, if you get your recipe how you like it, you can always come over here to your preset space and you can do a new preset from settings, and you can call this my standard. Um, oh, I've already got one of those from a previous attempt at this, my standard two. <laughs> and, uh, but my standard final, 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 and uh, press save. And then if you want to come across to this one, for example, and apply your standard preset, you can just come up here 
find it in your Wii list. Here's my standard two, and boom, there's there's the standard rendition of that, which matches that one. So there we go. The easier way, and this is only if you've got the Elite Edition. And in the Elite Edition, you have the ability to import and apply DCP and ICC profiles. So if you're in that, if you're in that boat, here's what you can do. And this is a great little cheeky trick uh, along the way. I'll just reset that one, and I will reset that one. Cool. So let me bring up this right here. Um, little trick. Program files. Adobe. You might be saying to me, but I don't have Adobe Lightroom. Download a trial. Even if you've already had the trial, doesn't really matter. If you can install it, even if you can't run it, the files will still be here. Um, Adobe Lightroom Classic, Resources, Camera Profiles, the Adobe Standard Camera Profiles are there, and Camera Profiles that are camera matching. So if I go down far enough on there, there's Nikons, which is what I've been using. They're all sort of listed out there, the same ones that are available um, within Lightroom. So what I did was I just grabbed mm, this folder right here and copied it, and I copied it to a spot on my desktop just so it was it was in a separate place. You could obviously put it wherever. And so if I wanted to apply Vivid to this and... Bear with me here because I've already been in here, so my list is going to look a bit different. Yours will be blank to start with, but if I go to DCP Profile and I click that, and Nikon Z6 Vivid, I'm actually, this particular one's from a Z50, Z50 Vivid, probably look awfully similar anyway. There you have it. So it's not 100% perfect in my opinion. It's awfully close, though. And of course, if you do need to load one, if it's not already in your list, it's as simple as DCP profile. And when I drop this down, the very first choice is import DCP profile. It keeps a memory of ones you've had open, which you can see here, the Wii X, so you can get rid of them if you want to. Uh, Z50 standard, for example. So if I, if I didn't have Z50 standard in my list, uh, I could just come here to the profile. And again, I showed you the 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 path in and this is just where I've saved it on my desktop dot 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 to camera Z50 and then they're all just listed here and if I wanted standard just click it open it and it will apply that so it's as easy as that and this one if I take this this is uh, done on portrait this is Nikon portrait and if I come here we go here to vivid or to portrait pardon me and again not perfect but pretty darn close and Honestly, I mean, I, this will be down to everybody's preference, but I actually think the skin tones are a smidge nicer on the Lightroom version that I'm seeing there. So that's it. We've got two ways of trying to match the camera profiles. It doesn't come up naturally, so to speak. It's something that you'd have to sort of develop or, or find a workaround for, but it is possible. So hope that helps. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk again soon. Bye bye.